Hey folks, we got a special guest coming in tomorrow. Pat Four, he's a whitetail enthusiast. Tomorrow's gonna be his first turkey hunt. We want everything to be perfect. We're gonna start, we're gonna get a jump on it, but we're gonna we're gonna try to roost some turkeys tonight. Or what you may you may have heard people say put the turkeys to bed. And what that means is what you want to do is you want to go out an hour or so before it gets dark, uh, two hours, just before fly-up time. As the turkeys fly up into the trees, uh, you'll hear the gobblers will sound off, and what they're doing is they're letting the, the hens know where they're at. Um, a lot of people hear about roosting turkeys, but not a lot of people know how to do it. Um, as a general rule of thumb, what you want to start out with, um, if you're hunting in the hardwoods of Pennsylvania, you know, it can be a lot tougher. So what you want to look for is you want to look for, uh, we have a, a thick uh, patch of pines in here and some hemlocks. Oftentimes the turkeys roost here. Uh, we also have a lot of walnut trees with some horizontal limbs on them. Um, and what you do is, you, the best way to do is you just want to sit there and listen for a little while. If you, if you don't hear any sounds, you know, try some locator calls. I like to use an owl call. I like to use a crow call. Um, I don't recommend using a turkey call. Uh, a lot of times you can get away with it, but I, I don't recommend it just in case a bird flies up late, you know, and uh, comes running in on you. Um, and when you're roosting turkeys, whether it's in, it, whether it's Merriam turkeys in, in Montana, if you're uh, roosting Osceola turkeys in Florida, basically the same concept. And what you're doing is you're trying to find out whether those turkeys fly up at night. First thing the next morning, you want to get in tight to those turkeys, roughly 100 to 150 yards away uh, in the dark. Um, and you want to get in there and you want to get set up and get ready for the hunt tomorrow. I'd like to give a personal thanks to the National Wild Turkey Federation. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have near the number of birds that we do here to hunt. See you in the morning. After roosting this turkey last night, we pinpointed the gobbler's position and set up accordingly. We chose to set up west of his roost tree. We had a feeling the birds would work up the power line to feed. After dueling with the gobbler back and forth, we soon realized he wouldn't budge as we could hear hens with him. At this point, we chose to call the hens in and hope the gobbler would follow. After completing a world slam of the five subspecies and traveling all over the U.S. and Mexico, Sean Seacrest has experienced many situations calling a gobbler off the roost. With this in mind, I can honestly say Pennsylvania Easterns are the hardest to harvest off the roost due to numerous forested areas and hunting pressure. We had to get very aggressive with these two hens using the Sportsman's Choice waterproof call and triple reed diaphragm, which ultimately pulled the gobbler into an awkward shot. Another hen.
ways already in gun range. If you get caught moving now, you'll never get a shot. Yeah, let him get in the decoys. Because he's going to walk right by us and follow those live hens. There's no hurry. Shot doesn't always work the way you want. As you see, Sean, the guide, ends up shooting the turkey due to Pat being pinned down and unable to move into shooting position. Worst choice. Game call. Right on. Good call. Good call. I'm glad you said shoot. I could see him out of the corner of my eye, and I was waiting. Yeah, yeah. I wanted him to. I was waiting for the signal, and I'm like, man. I knew, because he was blocking my movement. I know, I know. I knew I could swing on him, but I was like, man, I'm waiting for Pete to give me bring, the call. Bring him over, Pat. Get through this. Yeah. I didn't have it. I had, like, right here. Right. If this, if this wasn't here, I could have got him. Like, when I turned to look. Right. You had, you had the shot, like, right here. Yeah. And you had it where you could get it right there. You did good. You hung in there. Yeah, man. You were tight. All right. I usually get really worried when, you know, when it takes someone new. Because people always, you know, they think it's That's like a deer. I was saying. My leg was just starting to, like, ache there. I was like, can I move? Then I just moved this one just that little bit to gain it. Because this was here. It was starting to hit me. Oh, it wasn't? Back. It was like, ugh, ugh. Yeah. Good work. Good work. This is Pat Ford. We're here, obviously, a rainy morning. Everybody else is in bed. We stuck it out. Uh, we set up here on a power line. Figuring the birds want to come out in the, to the open field with the rain. Hold the bird. 6.30 in the morning. Had him gobbling right off the roost. Had some hens with him. Kind of henned up for a little while. After about an hour of waiting, started drifting back. And basically what we did is we called the hens in. Um, he was sticking with his hens. We called the hens in, as you saw. They, they came right through the decoys. It kept on heading out, and he slowly followed. Um, we were all patient enough to just just wait for him, and he almost got away. Almost. Oh. Yeah, what you do? That, that, that brand new call that I gave you yesterday. Yeah. Yep. That hen. She didn't like that raspy. You know, the hen heard that real raspy call, high pitched. It's a triple reed. Call, real raspy, real high pitched. Turkey hunting has a name, Sportsman's Choice. Sportsman's Game Choice, call. there it is. That's what killed that bird. Actually, those hens killed that bird. She came looking for another boss hen. Just couldn't take it. What we got here? Uh, we're looking at uh, 11 inch beard. Yeah. Pretty good. 11 yeah. inch beard. Big, big uh, beard and uh, spurs, decent sized spurs on it. Good turkey. Good turkey. Good Any day. Beautiful day out in beautiful Bucks County, PA.